Hi guys, welcome to another video and this one is one that I really enjoy making. Um, I, I've been asked before um, and I, I, I've given my opinion to people directly when they an, an, ask me and um, it's been via like social media or emails or messages or something like that and I always responded directly and I, I got a question this weekend uh, about the same thing, but it was kind of like they took it to another level because I've always been asked how I, how they could do it in a two channel mode, but this time they asked me if it also could be applied to home theater, and um, I said yes, and he said well it would be nice if you had made a video about it on what we can do and how it can be done, and then it, it hit me like. Dang, why haven't I made a video like this before? Why haven't I done this earlier? Because it should have been done and it could have been done. And I just guess it went down the, the tube of forgotten things. Um, it involves, as you can see, I'm standing here in front of a car audio display from Powerbase. Um, let me say, this doesn't matter what brand you're using. Um, and um, of course, there are certain brands that I really recommend. Um, so it involves uh, car audio, it involves hi-fi, and it involves home theater. And, and you might ask, whoa, what? What's going on here now? Well, I made a video before, <laughs> years ago, I think it is, a couple of years, about using car audio drivers to build your hi-fi speakers a lot of the audio files and the audio enthusiasts are like oh you can't do that it will never sound good wrong some of the better diy speakers for hi-fi uh, comes with the use of car audio speakers and i have in the past built many many hi-fi speakers using car audio drivers, car audio woofers, subwoofers, you name it. And in blind test have shocked the so-called audiophiles when it outplayed speakers that cost several thousand dollars. Yes. So it can be done, should be done, go ahead, do it. Um, but that's just building DIY speakers. Um, this question that I got this weekend really took it a step further because it involves amps. The question was, can I use car audio amps and car audio speakers for that matter at home? But he also wanted to use um, car audio amplifiers to power his hi-fi speakers and his home theater speakers. I said, no problem, you can do that. And in fact, it is in sometimes better and cheaper and takes up less room and sometimes Yes, it involves a little bit more handiwork from you guys, who's going to do it. Um, it's not much. The, the hookup is not that, that much greater than on a regular amplifier system. So let's just jump straight into the thing. I am holding here a um, catalog from Powerbase. And I, I can say now that there is like four or five brands that I deal with on a regular basis, on a daily basis, that I'm a dealer for. That I would recommend you to use and if you want to go this route talk to me I'll hook you up for a really really good price um, so let's just do this right away image dynamics true technology Sur and Vega power base focal linear power are the brands that I would recommend you to go with when you do this uh, can you use other brands sure 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 but the reason uh, the allergies are coming on, my, my car is like covered with yellow pollen and I'm struggling. Um, the reason I'm holding a power base catalog is because if you look at the display behind me here, this display is run straight from the wall socket. There's no batteries, there's no chargers, nothing like that. There are other options out there, so you can use that, but this is the simplest, the best, and I'll tell you why. So when I uh, have this uh, display here, and when we run it, when I got it, I got it from another store that had had it for years, 
and they had done some things that they shouldn't have done. So I had to go back in and rewire the whole caboodle. And, and it had, um, as you can see, one, this one is leaning a little bit. So that's the only thing that I have to do now is kind of like push it back because it had taken some damage when they shipped it to me. So I have to kind of like pull it back and glue it. But that's the only thing now. But I, the ones who had it before me had really, really, I don't know what they had done. So I had to rewire the whole thing. And so, it, but it's so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. And up here I have a control unit. Uh, it's control, you can use it with U, uh, Bluetooth. It also has an aux in uh, for wire transfer. Like you can use wires. You don't have to use Bluetooth. And there's, like you can see, three amps, one monoblock, a four channel and a two channel amp. And this is like hooked up to two subwoofers on the bottom that you don't see. There you see, there's the two subwoofers. Um, and uh, you have three sets of fronts and rear speakers, six by nine, six and a half, uh, coaxial and six and a half component set. Um, like I said, this can be done with any either or any brand. I can take out the speakers here and put Sarah Mega speakers in there, no problem. I can take the amps out, put Sarah Mega amps or True Technology amps or Linear Power amps or Image Dynamics or whatever focal I want to put in there, I can do that. So it's very easy to inter interchange. Well, that was just to explain how easy this really is. It is so easy. Now, to use this with a hi-fi setup or a home theater setup, how can we do that? Well, first of all, you have to know that I'm running all of these amps on a little gadget behind here. And uh, like I said, it comes straight from the wall. There's no batteries, there's no chargers, not, no of that mess. And a lot, uh, this is probably because, uh, because of that, people have been a little bit reserved against it because they're thinking, oh, I have to have a battery. I have to have a charger, that's a mess, there's a risk, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to deal with that hookup. No battery, no charger, okay? Let me show you. It's the best way I can do it right now. See that little thing right there? That is the little magic box, okay? You can get power supply um, other places. If The ones you need are the ones that can take a lot of power and can give a lot of power. Um, so power supplies can be fairly expensive if you get the, the right ones. Do not, and I say again, do not fall for the shit that people say that you can use computer power supplies. Yeah, it might work, but I do not recommend it, okay? This is an um, 100 amp AC to DC power supply. Let me just read what it says, okay? 100 amp AC to DC regulated power supply, up to 100 amp output current, up to 400 amps output current linking four units. Yes, that's right. You can link four of these and get 400 amps. <clears throat> 120 volt input voltage, 220 volt input voltage. It's not switchable. You have to order either one. So if you order it from me, you have to say, hey, I live in a country that has 120, 110, 120, and that's what you get. Or you say, hey, I live in a country where they have 220. And that is what you're getting. It's not switchable between those two. Um, Built-in quiet fan cooling for, for cooling of this thing. Uh, LCD uh, voltage meter uh, included. Uh, intelligent three-way protection circuit. Now, now the interesting things start. So let's say that you have a hi-fi system you run a strictly two-channel setup. Two speakers, one amp. Or you have four speakers, two amps. Or you have two speakers, two subwoofers, two amps. Then you use that little box that I showed you there. You put that in your system and you hook up car audio amps to this one. Of course, you have to think about this. This is, this is uh, putting out 100 amps of current. So if your amplifier, if one amplifier is pulling 80 and the other one is pulling 60, 
you will have to have two of these. So that, that's that's the thing here. But then again, if you have, let's say you have four of these, you can run a huge system. If you have two of these, you can run a huge system. Uh, most car audio amps delivers more power than <laughs> hi-fi amps. So, and, and this one can easily cover two amps with a fairly good uh, result. Hold on one second. So, let's say you have, you want to build this two channel system, you need two amps, and the amps that you are getting are drawing maybe like 40 amps each, one drawing 50, one drawing 40, you use one of these, one of those power supply things. Then you get your, your amplifiers, and you, you build yourself a little nice setup, you can just lay them flat too on something a stereo rack or whatever but i would make it a little bit nice you know maybe build it like a display and you when you use it at home and um you know you run your wires and all that stuff and you just build it up to a nice little looking system and um, if you want to like go further um let's say you want to do a bigger system you get two or three or four of these, you can link them, or you can run them separately as well. Uh, you don't have to link them, but they can be linked. Well, let me put it over here. <clears throat> uh, so, um, that is the beauty of having a power supply like that. It's dedicated, it has all the protection that you need, it, have, it has the amperage that you need. <clears throat> and, uh, let me do this. Now you see it came on. Uh, and if you, if you, if you want to do this for, let's say, I have multiple speakers, I want to, you know, run a big system um, with subwoofers and all that stuff. Think about this. Is there anything that is more easier and convenient than car audio when it comes to uh, active crossovers and, and splitting signals? No. Way easier than hi-fi and, and pro audio. Yes, you can use the pro audio three-way, two-way, four-way crossovers that are made out there, but it's way more expensive than car audio, let me tell you. And the sound is <laughs> it's not much different than sound, sound experience or sound quality or, or sound output. In a home, you probably get more sound uh, in most normal listening rooms from a car audio setup than a pro audio. Um, so, and you, you build your subwoofer boxes and all kind of, kind of stuff anyway for your car, so why not do it for home? Most people do that anyway, you know? Uh, so, um, let's now say that, okay, um, you want to build a display and hook up your speakers and... Um, it's so easy. It's just it. All that really stops you or prevents you from doing things is your imagination and your crazy ideas. If you don't get any ideas how to do it, well, then that's that's your problem. But you know you, you can easily change between speakers by building a little panel with speak on connectors. Easy release, easy plug in. Easy release, easy plug in. And you can change between your speakers in the room. You can do that with hi-fi too, but you know, why not build it all into one? Oh, it's this thing. Why not build it all into one panel or one display? So doing it for a two-channel setup is easy peasy, straightforward, no big deal. Very easy, and it can be sounding really good. I have run a car audio amplifiers on Surin Vega hi-fi speakers in the past and let me tell you it is fun <laughs> really fun um i used back then i used phoenix gold amplifiers i also tested some denon car audio amplifiers sounded really good um i even did hyphonics the old school hyphonics um on on Saren vega i also have tested high um really high fire speakers i had a power uh pair of Boris and Wilkins one one time years years back 
and I run car audio amplifiers on that. Mwah! Did it sound good? Oh yeah. And then I use Sapco amplifiers on that on those, and it sounded really really good. This was like 2002, 2003, something around there, and it sounded really good. Then I used I didn't use this power supply that I'm talking to you about now. I used a different type of power supply, uh, which was way more expensive than what this one cost. Um, so some people ask me, well, what is the price on this power supply? Well, it's a it's just around somewhere between two ninety nine and three three thirty three three twenty five. 299 to 325 somewhere for one uh, but of course if you are a member of the groups and you remember here and so that we always haggle a little bit and I will give you some discounts and um, you might say well I can get computer supply for like uh, 180 to 200 bucks don't use them don't don't they're made for computers not for amplifiers there is I have seen Yes, it can be done, but I have seen havoc being made when people are trying to hook this shit up, okay? And when they hooked it up, maybe they did it the right way, but at some point down the road, something really bad happened. Don't do it. And those power supply for computers can be kind of confusing, and if you hook it up the wrong way, disaster right away. So don't do it. Don't use the computer power supplies. Um, and the other supplies that you can buy, they are expensive. I have one here now. It's a Mako. It's a 60 amp Mako. New price on that one, MSRP new price, is almost 400 bucks for a 60 amp. I have one used here now that I'm selling for 169. Um, so the car audio uh, power supply that Power, uh, power Base had is cheap. It is cheap and is dedicated for this type of use. And it's so easy. You plug it in your wall and you plug up your, your uh, plus and minus to your amps. That's it. That's it. And uh, ah, I got out of it. <laughs> uh, well, the two-way system is, is fairly easy. But when I got the question... That was like, hey, can I build a home theater system with car audio amps? I don't know if you want to use car audio speakers as well. If you want to, let's say, build yourself a car audio based home theater system. So you want to build front speakers, center, uh, surround speakers, side fill, back fill, um, subwoofers. Yes, you can build those speakers and use for home audio, home, home theater no problem it will sound really good um so the question was hey can i use amplifiers as well yes of course you can you have there is several uh suppliers i know pioneer i think alpine and there's a couple of others who has um home well not home theater but theater <laughs> surround sound like decoders and and boxes that kind of splits up the signal so you can run a theater sound or surround sound in your car. So you use that one. You can interchange here too. You can use a home theater uh, receiver as a preamp. There, can, there might be some difference in signal strength. So there might be a little bit yeah, there. I have done it before and never been a problem. Um, but there are... There are brands out there who have surround decoders or surround boxes for car audio use. So if you get one of those, then you have your preamp, okay? Then you can just start building with these amps. And, and, the, and the beautiful thing about car audio amps is that they come in like monoblocks, four-way, five-way, two-channel. Um, well, well, that's what I was meaning. Two channel, four channel, five channel, six channel. They, you know, you get car audio amplifiers with a lot of channels. And they also have a lot of stuff built in. They have low pass filters, high pass filters, crossovers, you know, everything you need really to set up a really, really good system. And it's easy to do. It's no more big of a deal than hooking up your regular home theater system with 
if you use like a home feeder receiver and the speakers that go with it or you you do custom or even if you do home feeder receivers as a preamp and you use power amps to hook up to that that's just as much work as this this is not much work at all so what brands do i recommend well i said it in the beginning you can use any brand that you want but i really recommend the brands that I sell or the brands that I because I sell these brands because I have good experience with them. Image Dynamics has some really good subwoofers. They have some really good speakers. They have some really good amps. I'm going to add one more in and that's Audio Control. Uh, I like Audio Control. They have a lot of great stuff as well. They have some great amps. Um, so if you want to use Image Dynamics, Audio Control, um, Focal, Soren Vega, Power Base, Linear Power, True Technology, you will be satisfied and happy. When it comes to amps, I would probably do Linear Power and True Technology just because they have such a high sound quality and <laughs> great performance. When it comes to subwoofers, it really doesn't matter which one you go with. Um, the image dynamics is maybe like a little bit more higher end than Surin Vega and Power Bass. And the Focal is even more high end. When it comes to speakers, Focal and Image Dynamics has some really nice sounding ones. And if, if your budget is a little bit lower, Surin Vega and Power Bass. And um, if you know how to build a two-way or a three-way speaker, <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. You can use this. Um, if you know how to hook up car audio in your car, you can easily do this at home. The, but the biggest clue here is the power supply and how easy it is. Um, the only thing is, if you if you do a two-channel pure stereo system, it's okay. That's way more easier. No problem in hooking up, getting this to work. If you do the home theater thing, you have to have a uh, a surround processor or preamp or decoder uh, or a little box that are that have this in it and I know for a fact that I have seen I know for a fact that Pioneer has it I've seen it and there's a couple of others that has it too because you know people have put surround sound in their cars all the time um, so can, can it be done yes it can be done is it as good as if you're thinking two channel stereo you know it really depends what you kind of like compare it to if you compare it to a 50,000 if you take a two thousand dollar car audio system and compare it to a fifty thousand dollar hi-fi system maybe not but if you compare the two thousand dollar car audio system to a two three four five thousand dollar hi-fi system yeah it will compete and probably sound better um for home theater use uh, can it be done that was that was the question hey can this be done yes it can be done and, and it should be done more often if you ask me here's one little uh, extra little tidbit for you guys um a year year and a half ago i had ray rayfield from linear power in my store here we had a discussion we talked a little bit uh, he showed me some products um he had been in Nashville because uh, a recording studio, a recording studio, a big recording studio in Nashville had installed linear power car audio amps in their sound studio for recording music instead of using hi-fi amps or pro amps. That should tell you something. That should tell you something really how good car audio can be for use in homes. And I see no problem. Uh, some people might say, oh, it's going to sound terrible. It's going to look bad. You have wires everywhere. Really? I don't see much wires or 
messy things. All I see is a couple of holes on this side here where the wires comes out and plugs in the amp. Same over here with the RCA. If you think you're, uh, if you don't think there's any cable mess or wire mess when it comes to hi-fi and, and pro audio system, think again. <laughs> This can be done way more neatly than running regular old school fashioned hi-fi systems where you have <clears throat> RCA cables, speaker cables, uh, you maybe have some power strips, everything is behind and running, laying in a big mess or you have, maybe you're one of the more needy guys who ties everything up with strips and, and ties, still you're going to see it unless you use a, a sock around like the plastic sock. So no, I don't buy that, that it looks bad or looks worse. It all depends on how you do it. And that is also true, in fact, with hi-fi systems and hi-fi products. You can make it look really nasty and messy just running regular hi-fi amps and speakers. So um, that is not a factor. And that it sounds bad or sounds worse? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, it's been proven many, many times that if you have a good sounding power amp and a good sounding pair of speakers uh, I doubt that anyone could say oh that's car audio if they didn't know uh, and there's a reason why <laughs> trust me it's being done already a lot of people are doing it and for a sound studio a recording studio to do it that should tell you something and um, when it comes to bass oh you have so much more options oh so much more options than hi-fi Hi-Fi is kind of limited in many ways. Um, it's maybe the most limited group of audio products. There's more options and more diversity and more selection in the pro audio and car audio to do things in a little bit more custom way than you have in a Hi-Fi thing. Hi-Fi is very set and strict and this is how it should be. Um, so yeah, well, I've heard that oh, you, you, you don't have remote. Uh, newsflash, most, uh, <laughs> most car audio can be run remotely. You have Bluetooth today, you have bass knobs that have like 20 feet wires. But then they say, well, what about this? Well, what about what? If you want to use a regular hi-fi CD player or DVD player hook up to this, you can. You can. If you want to use a car audio um, or mobile audio head unit or one like, it's not many head units being sold today that are like complete. Most of them are just um, uh, info center uh, where you have hook up your Bluetooth and everything and then that's about it But there are some CD players out there DVD players out there So if you want to use a, a car audio head unit that have also have all of that you can do that That's not a problem, but you can integrate this with you can integrate car audio amps and car audio systems with home CD players and DVD players you can do that not a problem not a problem you have to think about this. Most of these car audio amps and car audio systems have um, voltage in that spans way more than a hi-fi. So the input signal on the amps and the output signal from a CD player, DVD player for home, they, they mix and match really well. Never had, I've never had a problem with it. I never lost any signal. <clears throat> never really created any more distortion or anything bad um, I've done it for years I've done it many many times not a problem so if you want to start looking into it, it it's really really cool um, I have I back in the 90s I was running car audio and in my home and um, without a problem uh, I, I remember I used that back then I had it wasn't it wasn't like big one it was like one pair of speakers one amp one CD player that was it but I think the power supply I used back then was 60 65 amps or something like that um, 
And that was a used one that I came across. So I got it, it was cheap. But so it can be done and it's been done for years by many. So if you want to explore the opportunity of making a two channel stereo system with car audio speakers or amplifiers, I suggest you do. If you want to go the route of home theater, yeah, oh yeah, cool as hell, uh, cool as hell. And if you want to build everything yourself, go ahead. It's fun. It, it, it's time consuming if you're going to build it from scratch up. Um, but uh, go ahead. It's really, really cool. I hope this uh, kind of like gave you a little bit of ideas. Um, it wasn't like, I'm, it wasn't a video that I was going to go deep into. I just wanted to explain that yes, it is possible. And here is why. And what, this is why you should do it. So, if you want to do it the on a budget friendly thing, power base server vega if you want to do it a little bit more expensive put a little bit more money into it focal audio control uh, true technology linear power absolutely recommended um, until next time take care guys